good, everybody? Welcome to an epic My Damn Toys video. Today, we have a very, very special video, guys. We are going down memory lane here today. We're going to, we're taking a trip. We're taking a trip down memory lane here today, and we are going to be showcasing every single figure that has been featured or created on WWE Action Figure Surgery. I'm going with the created portion, you know, the end of the video where we show off what we've done. This is every single figure from every single episode that we have done. We've done 32 episodes, and I figured, you know, yesterday was the 32nd episode of Action Figure Surgery, so why not showcase all the figures here today, and, you know, just sort of just recap everything that we've done, and all I'm gonna do is take you through every single one. They are actually in numerical order, from the first figures that we created all the way till what we did yesterday. And if you missed yesterday's episode, definitely check that out before coming back here and checking this out. But uh, I have the list right here, and I also have everything that we did on the certain videos. There are going to be some figures that aren't featured, and that's either because they were traded, which is only like one or two, or, you know, they weren't, uh, I couldn't find them, or some other random cause. I really don't, I couldn't tell you why. I just couldn't find them, or they, they just ceased to exist, man. But anyways, guys, let's go ahead and dive right in, and we're going to get started with the very first figures that were ever featured on WWE Action Figure Surgery, and it was this Triple H and these two Rollins. So the first figure ever that we had was, I guess you can say the two Rollins were too, but this right here is a 2002 return Triple H when he returned from injury, and this is a custom figure. I think all we did was we, we like cracked a torso, and we head swapped it, and we added the clothes and everything. So very basic for the first episode of Action Figure Surgery, but this is the uh, one that started it all, guys, and it was this 2002 2002 Triple H. And the other two figures that we did on that video, guys, were these two TNF Rollins. And all we did were th with these is we, I think we cracked the torsos and we put some basic Rollins arms in there because on the TNF Rollins, they gave them the new arm articulation. I hated it. I still hate it to this day. And I'm super glad that we switched out those arms on that day and now we have some sweet fix-ups that we, uh, we've we made here. Now, next up, guys, episode two of Action Figure Surgery was very interesting. We had a ton of Rollins on there and I think Rollins is the guy that has been featured the most at anybody in the entire roster, anybody in action figure surgery history, uh, he has been featured the most. And I think I'm going to challenge everybody down in the comment section below. Go ahead and let me know how many figures were in this video. Count it up, you know, watch to the end. And then if you really want to get crazy, break it down by superstar and tell me how many of each superstar we've had on there. I bet Rollins is definitely number one. But uh, what we did with all these different Rollins, guys, all you can see here, uh, we didn't fully make the customs, but what we did is we were sort of prepping. What we did was we had the original Elite 37 Rollins. I think there's like four Elite 37 Rollins, two cash-ins, and two Elite 45s. And all we did was switch off the arms. They had really skinny arms. We switched them out for the current Rollins arms. And then we put the gloved hand mold and wrist gauntlets on there for the gloved look of Seth Rollins. It gives it a much more authentic look. It makes him look a lot better. So we not only had one, we had uh, two more here. We had a third, and then we had two cash-ins and two Elite 45s. And what I'll do real quick is just go ahead and pull them up here, and you guys can kind of see and showcase, you know, what we did exactly. Again, we just switched out the arms. We made sure, and then later on, I went in and did other parts of the fix-up, you know, like the head swaps here, the painted hair, chest hair, things of that nature. Changed the attire up a little bit, depending on what Rollins was rocking at the time. You can see here, this is like his first singles run. You got the belt buckle logo on there. And uh, I just like these arms much better. They look so much better than uh, what Mattel gave us. Here you have two different Rollins. You have the cash-in Rollins at Mania, and then you have, you know, his 2015 heel run as WWE Champion. I love this look of Rollins. I wish he'd bring this back, man. Two different versions there. Just beautiful stuff. And then finishing off that episode of Action Figure Surgery, guys, episode number two, we did have these two Rollins here. And again, all we did was switch out the knee pads, and then we switched out the right arm because we wanted to make a pre-match Rollins, which was this one, and then we made a post-match Rollins because he lost the one gauntlet. We switched out to the smaller knee pads from the TNF Basic, and I had the titles on display. Now I don't. I need to put them back on display, but that is it for episode two of Action Figure Surgery. On episode number three of Action Figure Surgery, guys, the only figure that we made was this Tommaso Ciampa, and looking back at it now, this looks like absolute garbage. It's way too tall. The head scan's terrible using that NXT Basic, and it's just so trash. I mean, I hate it, and we have a whole episode that has like 20,000 views dedicated to this one figure, and that's just that's just awful. Believe it or not, guys, on episode 4 of Action Figure Surgery, there was no figure featured, uh, or no new figures featured. We actually went back to those uh, those first episode Rollins and we fixed those up a little bit more, so that is what we did on episode 4. However, on episode 5, we came back to Seth Rollins and we made this uh, 2015 Superstar of the Year, Slammy Award winning Seth Rollins in the suit. We used a build a figure Michael Cole, we painted it up, put the smiling head skin on there, added the knee brace, had the 
Crutch on there and added the Slammy Award, as well as we took this Attitude Era Amazon exclusive Chris Jericho. We popped off the knee pads and gave him the smaller open knee pads to make it more accurate. On episode 6 of Action Figure Surgery, guys, we actually made two different figures here, and it was a feud that you guys didn't even know that was about to take place. I actually knew it was going to take place. You guys did not, however. And we made this United States Jet Champion Jack Swagger, and then we made this Shelton Benjamin. I'm pretty sure I made these on surgery before I put them on MDT Live Television, and then they went on to feud into the Royal Rumble. And so, uh, th that's pretty crazy here. Jack Swagger is still your current U.S. Champion, while Shelton Benjamin is not. And uh, what we did for this is we just switched out the larger knee pads for one cash-in Rollins knee pad and one Elite 45 Seth Rollins knee pad to tie in that white and gold and black and gold. And then for this Jack Swagger, I think we switched the arms to this tape look, and then we switched out the head scan, and then later on we did switch out his boots, and we switched out his knee pads. I love the way that Swagger figure looks, by the way. Moving on to episode number seven, guys. The only figure that I think that I could find from that video is this fix-up AJ Styles right here, and this is an Elite 47 AJ Styles fix-up. All we did with this figure is add the knee pads that AJ Styles wears with the open knee pads, and then we switched out the kick pads with Elite 56 AJ Styles kick pads, so it kind of looks pretty good, you know, sort of a simple swap, but there's a, this is a swap that a lot of people have done in the past. Moving on to episode eight, guys, what a very uh, big episode of action figure surgery that we did right here, guys, and this is the episode where we created the newly look, or the new look of the bloodline. Roman Reigns and the bloodline are the champions on MDT Live here, and this is the episode where we actually created the red pants look of the bloodline. So we had the white versions in that video, but uh, we didn't create those on that video. We, we created these on that episode, and we made the red pants look of the bloodline. We switched out the arms of the Usos, giving them white wrist tape. We added their jackets, their bandanas, and then we did the torso switch and the shoulder swap and all that good stuff with Roman Reigns. So what a great episode. What an iconic episode that was by creating the bloodline. Next up, guys, we had three figures on episode number nine, and this is what we created here. One of the figures was this white boot Bobby Roode, and it is the Target exclusive NXT figure. All we did was put the white boots on there, and then later on, I removed this facial hair to give him the mustache. That was not done on that episode, but uh, very simple swap we did there. Another couple figures that we did on that episode, guys, is we took this Elite 63 Sami Zayn. We added the white wrist tape to give him that heel look that he had when he was rocking this attire, which I still love this figure. Very simple fix-up, but it is a nice one. And then the last figure that we did on that episode is this Ty Dillinger, and all we did was switch out his arms with the Elite 63 Sami Zayn arms, and then we switched out his hands for the 10 hands. That's the whole reason we did that is so you could do the 10 pose with the figure. Very simple fix up, but it was nice. On episode number 10, guys, we actually made two different versions of Undisputed Era. We had our Undisputed Era versions where we had the armband, so we had two different uh, grill. We bought two different packs of the shit. Let me fix this camera. So on that episode, we made two different versions of Undisputed Era, guys. You will see here. I made some trades. I did some digging around, and I got it to where I had three of these Undisputed Era upper arms here, and what I did was I switched them out on, uh, I think it was like, is one of them where they don't come with the armband, and then one of them does come with the armband, and then Adam Cole comes with a removable armband. So what I did was I made a version where all members of Undisputed Era don't have the armband, and then I made a version where all of them do have the armband. So you can kind of get a different look if you want, you know, a different version. You want to make custom singles versions, whatever. We have the ability to do so, and then we have our Undisputed Era version where all of them are rocking the armband with it painted on right there. So I really like that version uh, to, you know, have different looks of both ways. On episode 11, guys, we did make three fix-ups here, and we have this flashback 2003-era-ish Shawn Michaels. We have this punk cash-in figure. We did have the heavyweight championship and the Money in the Bank briefcase with this guy. We acetoned off the Elite 11 CM Punk. We made some, or we added some smaller knee pads. I think we switched out the hands. We also switched out the head sculpt, and then we took the New Day Bootios Toys R Us exclusive three-pack, and then we switched out one of the Kofi arms with a black sleeve to give him a different look there. Very simple stuff, but a very good fix up indeed for Kofi and then I really love the punk custom and then the uh, flashback HBK you know 2003 or mid 2000s Shawn Michaels. I'm still uh, actually going to switch out these lower legs for some longer ones and give them a, a, some different looking boots and then we're going to switch out these arms for some HBK arms with white wrist tape but uh, I'm still working on that one. Episode number 12 guys we made this Daniel Bryan and we actually had another Daniel Bryan on there but I could not find it for whatever reason I think I turned it into a custom but we made this heel Daniel Bryan I think he had recently turned heel, so we took one of my Brines, painted it all black, gave him an all black look with the Elite 32 head sculpt. We also made this Triple H right here with the long hair and the black tape. I think we just switched out the head sculpt. He had the shaved head on there, and we wanted to give him the longer hair look from that. I think it was his WrestleMania match with Lesnar, maybe, or something like that. Uh, maybe not. I can't freaking remember.
remember crap. We then took the Elite 63 Chase variant Shelton Benjamin and we switched out the knee pads with the smaller knee pads for our gold standard Shelton Benjamin. On episode 13 of Action Figure Surgery, guys, we actually had our hands full. We made all kinds of stuff going on and we actually had the only female figure we've ever featured on Action Figure Surgery. And what we did here, guys, we made this Alexa Bliss, which is the Survivor Series Elite, I think. Or no, we took the Survivor Series Elite and we head swapped it with the Elite 53 Alexa Bliss and that turned out really nice. One of my favorite uh, Alexa Bliss figures by far. I really love the way this one came out. Very, very nice stuff. We also took one of my Adam Coles. We switched out the legs to give him a taller look. We also gave him the Undisputed Era armband. So this Adam Cole right here goes with the Undisputed Era with the armbands, obviously. And then we have a version that we use on Vindication, which is the one without the armband. Still looking forward to getting many more Adam Coles. But also on that episode, guys, we did make this Elite 61 AJ Styles fix-up where we made uh, the one blue knee pad to go on the right blue kick pad. And then we have the left knee pad that is red to match the left kick pad, which is in red. Just sort of a different look and a different take on the Elite 61 AJ Styles. And then the final fix-up that we had, I don't know if you guys can see it, but one of these, I can't remember which arm it is, but one of these arms is in black, but uh, I have since fixed it up and gave him this jacket, added white outsoles and things of that nature. So this Finn Balor was featured on that episode. I'm actually a stupid jackass. For some reason, uh, I had that red and blue AJ Styles for 13, but it was actually 14 that that was uh, featured on. But this next one, on this next episode, guys, we did have this red Shane McMahon from his match with Kurt Angle. We also had this white Finn Balor, and we had this Neville all featured on episode number episode number 15. So we had Neville, Red Shane, and White Finn all featured. These are really great. Uh, you guys remember this episode. On this episode, this is where my uh, Neville's beard fell off, that beautiful custom head sculpt we have here. It, his beard fell off. We had a big meltdown. It was crazy, but we did manage to fix it and salvage it, which was a huge deal to me. I was literally losing my mind. We also took the King of the Ring, Shane. We head swapped it for one of the better Shane McMahon head sculpts, and then we painted the hair black because this has way more likeness to Shane than the one that they gave him and so I like this version a lot better now. And then we made a beautiful white fantasy attire slash live event attire of Finn Balor and all we did was this. We took my white Neville and I think we broke it down, switched out the legs for William Regal, we added white kick pads, white knee pads, and then we switched the arms and head sculpt and now we have a beautiful live event, Finn Balor in white, which is so beautiful. On episode number 16 of Action Figure Surgery, guys, we did a lot of stuff. We have this Kurt Angle, which we did, uh, I think all we did was switch out the knee pads for smaller knee pads, but we also made two different Aiden Englishes, which this Aiden English is probably one of my favorite fix-ups we've ever done. Just a ton of great stuff. Uh, you guys can't see it here, but he does have the Sheamus torso. It looks so much more like Aiden English when he was a part of Rusev Day. And we also fixed up our Elite 65 Rusev. So we had our Elite 65 Rusev Day that was completely fixed up. They looked a lot better now, and it was a very successful day of surgery on that episode. We only had two figures on episode 17, guys, and all we did was fix up this MVP because he is a part of 100% American, which is a stable on MDT Live with Jack Swagger and Zack Ryder. And so we made this sort of just like Frankenstein effort of two different MVP figures. And then with this Big E, I think all we did, uh, we also had the Punisher Jeff Hardy on there, but we didn't construct it on that episode, I don't think. We did some other things, and we, we took off his shoes, and we replaced them with these Dolph Ziggler boots, and they actually kind of work with the black and white, and that was a pretty nice fix up there that just sort of worked out that way. But uh, not a huge surgery video, but it was successful nonetheless. On episode number 18, guys, all we had was this custom Tyler Bate, and it was a very short episode. I think we had a pay-per-view that day as far as uh, in WWE's terms, and so all I did was I took this Daniel Bryan, switched the lower legs, and then added the custom Tyler Bate head sculpt, and it was nothing too crazy because, again, we had like a pay-per-view that day, so I think it was a short and sweet episode, but uh, we got this beautiful custom Tyler Bate out of it, even though I still need to paint the trunks. On episode 19, we had a very successful day, guys. We switched out these Kevin Owens. This is when Kevin Owens actually returned from injury. He had the tattoos. We didn't add the tattoos in surgery. I think they were already there, but all we did was we switched out the uh, the boots. We switched out his boots for current boots because he went from, you know, he, he when he came into the main roster, he was walking the boots in NXT and then on to the main roster, and then he switched to the kick pad look, and then when he returned from injury, he was rocking the boots again, so we went ahead and switched that back, and I still think he's rocking boots to this day, and then we took our NXT Target exclusive Aleister Black figure, made him taller so he's not a short piece of trash, and then we made this MDT 
Finn, uh, Finn Balor. We had made this MDT John Cena with the champions here. We gave him the uh, the chain gang wristbands. We gave him the blue George to give him that Royal Rumble look that I wanted him to have. And yeah, he looks great. And you know, we haven't seen him since the Royal Rumble, but I'm sure he'll show up soon enough. Getting into the later episodes, guys, we are on to episode number 20. And you want to talk about a very successful day of surgery here, guys. Look at this episode right here. We did all kinds of great things. We had these four figures featured right here. And you want to talk about a good day of surgery. This this is what I'm talking about. Not only did we take the Elite 67 Jeff and head swap it to give him this, you know, non-face paint look of Jeff Hardy with the camo sleeves. We also torso swapped our Cedric Alexander and made him look a whole lot better, made him more accurate, and he's one of my favorite talents in the world, so I was super hyped on this episode for that. And we also had our Elite 67 Velveteen Dream in which we switched out the torso for the smaller Elite 63 Shelton Benjamin torso, which looks so much better. And then the final thing that we did was create this Aleister Black, which is the all-white attire. I think the only thing we didn't do was paint the trunks. I think I painted the trunks a different day because it took so many layers, but uh, we did add these Elite 45 Seth Rollins knee pads and then lower legs and then Elite 63 Shelton Benjamin kick pads to give him that white, gold, and black look. Very, very nice. Very hyped for it. I love this Aleister Black so much, and uh, what a great day at surgery. I mean, it, it just goes without saying. Look at how freaking epic that episode was. Four great-looking figures. On episode 21, guys, all we did was create the Royal Rumble look of Kevin Owens. Literally, that is all we did. I think we switched out some arms. We switched out some kick pads or something. No, man, we didn't switch out kick pads, but we did uh, switch out some arms. I think we painted up a head sculpt. We head swapped it, and then we added this custom t-shirt, and uh, it was a successful day. We added the Kevin F. and Owens shirt, and this is what he rocked at the MDT Royal Rumble, and he looked great, man. He looked fantastic, and he is coming up on another episode of MDT Live. Will he have to defend that extreme championship that is on the line 24-7? Episode 20 two guys did feature these two figures here. We have the different angles. We have this current sort of like tie in between older angle and newer angle and it is the Elite 66 Kurt Angle and we swapped out his lower legs with the longer boots and the red boots there. So sort of like if uh, Kurt Angle was able to go but he rocked sort of his older attire instead of the wrestling boots he went with these, you know, the taller boots that he used to rock back in the Ruthless Aggression era and then we took one of my extra ringside exclusive Finn Balor's and we switched out his kick pads and lower legs with Elite 43 Kofi Kingston to give him the white kick pad look. That's when he sort of started rocking that style and that, that you know, that style and that look. So, uh, that is what we went with there and that is it for episode number 22. Episode 23 was successful, guys. We did this Triple H here, which is a sort of current take on Triple H, the suited Triple H with the beard. We also made this Carl Anderson with white boots, which I freaking just love. I got this idea from Balor Figs UK and he pretty much took Brodus Clay boots and put them onto his Elite 56 Carl Anderson. And then we took the GameStop exclusive Samoa Joe and head swapped it with the Elite 64 Joe and arm swapped it with the Elite 64 Samoa Joe and it turned out absolutely fantastic. I love the way that Joe looks. So I love it when we do a lot of simple fix-ups on the surgery videos. It really adds to it. You know, even though if it's just a head swap, an arm swap, a boot swap, the really simple fix-ups are always the best ones. On episode 24, we had a couple fix-ups, guys. We made this Neville and this is using the Elite 55 Neville on the Elite 42 Neville body. I think we also switched out the kick pads or maybe we just acetoned the kick pads that he was wearing. I think that's what we did to give him the all black look. Sort of a heel Neville with his old face uh, purple, you know, attire that he rocked uh, back in 2014 or 15 I do believe and so uh, what a great little fix up there. I know a few people that have done that one and then we made our Apollo Crews all we did with this one is we were going to put white kick pad or white boots on him uh, or not white boots. He has white boots you stupid jackass. We made white boots and white knee pads. I saw that from Ballard Figs UK as well. I wanted to make that switch but uh, we didn't have any knee pads. I think we like, I thought I had them but I ended up not having them and it was a big thing but uh uh, we couldn't finish the swap, and then I figured out that, you know, he kind of looks bad A with no uh, knee pad, so that's the way we left him, and he's still that way to this day. We threw it back to old times, guys, in episode number 25. We went back, and we were like, you know what? It has, it's been a while since we featured a ton of Rollins, so what we did is we had a ton of Rollins featured on episode number 25, guys, and you guys will see here. Uh, we took the top talent, Seth Rollins. I think this is when I had a bunch of that head sculpt, and so we made a bunch of different Rollins. We made the Monday Night Rollins attire, and this is the 2019 Seth Rollins. Rollins top talent shirt I think this is what 
Uh, this figure came with this t-shirt, and I didn't want it to go on that figure, so I took it, put it on my 2018 Top Talents Rollins, switched out the arms for the SummerSlam Rollins to give him that black and red look that he was rocking, you know, soon thereafter during the Monday Night Rollins, you know, attire and everything, and I really like the way that this all came out with the Top Talents 2018 head sculpt. I took another one of those, put it on my Elite 45 Rollins, or another one of my Elite 45 Rollins. I have like 25 of these freaking figures, and I painted up the hair, added some blonde to it, and another thing I'd like to do is switch it out for the smaller knee pad and then it'd really be, you know, a good-looking fix-up. But uh, I did add the blonde there when he took on Cena at SummerSlam 2015, and that is definitely one of my favorite Rollins attires, if not my favorite by far. And then I took my 2019 Rollins, and instead of that terrible SummerSlam head sculpt they gave him, I did switch it out for the Top Talents 2018 Rollins head scan, and then gave him the entrance vest that came with the Elite 52 Rollins just to make it complete, and what a bad A-looking figure. And to finish off that episode, guys, we did take the brand-new 2019 Top Talents Finn Balor and switch it out for the head Head sculpt of the 2018 and I almost snapped his neck off. You can see the gap there. Very upsetting stuff. If you want to see me rage, go watch episode number 25 of WWE Extra Figure Surgery. What a sad day when I snapped that neck. I mean, those Rollins have to be adding up now, guys. My God. On episode 26, guys, all we did was sort of create this Bad Luck Fale figure right here and then we also created this Luke Harper. So we made this Bad Luck Fale. I don't think it had a head sculpt on it but we sort of just created it. We took a I think it was a Razor or a, a Acom. I can't remember. We switched out the arm for Umaga. We, uh, I don't think we painted the tattoos on that episode and then we added some uh, rock TNF legs. So that was Fale on that episode and then we made this well, the camera actually reached max capacity, so I had to restart this little clip here. But anyways, we made this Luke Harper, which is one of my favorite fix-ups. We took the Elite 66 Luke Harper figure, the Bludgeon Brothers, and we put that head sculpt on the Elite 35 Luke Harper, the Elite 35 Luke Harper, and then we uh, put a custom shirt on there, and it's actually shitty because it's actually like getting like stained. This shirt is nice, and it's nice because there's no Velcro on it, but it actually is staining the figure you can see here on the sleeves and the face. It really pisses me off, but it's a beautiful looking Harper nonetheless. We're running out of room here in the backstage area. On to episode 27, guys. We did make this Cena right here, which is a really nice fix-up. We put a WrestleMania 34 Cena head sculpt on to one of my Elite 34 Cena's and then we took some, uh, I think it's like a battle pack or a little pack that comes with Edge. Uh, took those arms, put them on there, added a custom shirt, made a custom chain gang necklace, painted up the hat of the chain gang to make it more accurate under the bill in white and then I added these uh, epic moments, Milko Mania Kurt Angle shoes and what a great looking Cena. One of my favorite Cena fix-ups, man. We've been killing it with the Cena fix-ups lately. I need to make a video dedicated to my Cena fix-ups or maybe a new Cena collection video because my God are they just beautiful. Freaking love it, man. Go He's the goat, man. Get out of here. On that episode, we also made this uh, Cody Rhodes, and all we did was Dremel off the boots, and I showed you guys, you know, how we did this. It was very simple, uh, how to make uh, Cody Rhodes boots out of any old regular boots, so I'm very happy with the way that came out. Current Iron Man champion, uh, Cody Rhodes. On episode 28, guys, we did fix up this Elite 67 Rey Mysterio. We took the Elite 67 Rey Mysterio. We switched out the arms for the older arms of Rey Mysterio instead of the sleeve look. We switched out his hands with black sleeves, and then we put the gauntlets back on there to give him this sort of like weird Frankenstein sort of like hybrid between older Rey Mysterio and newer Rey Mysterio. And a lot of people want me to switch out the shoulders for older Rey Mysterio just so it kind of gives them that sleeveless look. But I like both ways. I mean, I could see it either way. But nonetheless, I really like this idea. I'd never seen anybody do this. So uh, this was an original idea and I really love the way. The, the best ideas are the most original ones. And I was really happy with this Rey. And all we did with this uh, this Zack Ryder is we head swapped it with the old Zack Ryder head scale. And, and I, I really like this head sculpt better than the one they gave us. And uh, I, he's a heel on MDT Live, so I wanted to switch that out. And then I painted the headband in white. And I'd like to add some stars and stripes to it, you know, to tie into the America attire. But uh, we will see on that one. All right, guys, we are on to episode 29 of WWE Action Figure Surgery. Coming up on the end here, and on, it, on this episode of 29, we actually fixed up the entire Elite set of Elite Series 69, I do believe. We had Ricochet featured there, and all we did was switch out the knee pads. I think we switched out the lower legs as well. I think we switched out the lower legs with Sin Cara, and then we put some open knee pads on to make him more accurate height. We also took the Elite Series 69 Rey Mysterio and we made a beautiful looking fix up that was inspired by Steinsenberg Customs and we switched out the massive like Kawhi Leonard hands he had on there for some white gloved hands and then we put on the uh, the gauntlets. I think this is from a Rey Mysterio basic. Makes the figure look 20 freaking million times better. The white ties into the crotch piece, the white ties into the mask and it ties into the boots and it's just a very nice fix up. I highly recommend you making that one. We also made two different Lashleys on that episode. We have more of a current Lashley here and then we have
have the Trunks style Lashley with the Batista boots that we also fixed up. I think we did that on two separate episodes of Action Figure Surgery, but I went ahead and put them together because uh, we did make the two different versions on the same episode. I think we switched out the knee pads and did some other things, so there's our two Lashleys. And then we took our two Champas and we made a wrestling gear version with the Bobby Roode legs, and then we made a street gear version, and we didn't have the t-shirt at that time. The t-shirt was brought to me by my boy Rodney. Thank you so much, bro, for this sick custom shirt, even though I tore the sleeve off like a stupid idiot jackass. But uh, we made this figure nonetheless, so we have two different versions of Champa made with the same formula, so that's great. And it was a, it, one of the better episodes of Action Figure Surgery, guys. If you want to fix up your Elite Series 69, definitely go check out that video as we break down everything you'll need and everything you gotta do. On episode number 30 of Action Figure Surgery, guys, we made this beautiful looking Finn Balor, and what we did was pretty much make a street gear Finn Balor. I think I torso swapped a Milko Mania Kurt Angle, and then I added some white shoes. I think it's like some Uso shoes to it, and then I switched out the arms and the head sculpt, and I added a custom shirt and made this like gym slash street gear Finn Balor, which is really unique. I don't think I've ever seen anybody else do this, so I thought that was a pretty cool fix up slash custom. And on that same episode, we also made a different version of Ricochet with kick pads, and I think he is too tall, but we switched out his lower legs with AJ Styles, and then added these custom kick pads that were on my custom Ricochet back in the day, but uh, I do need to lower his height. I think I need some more Elite 44 Sin Cara lower legs, but Sin Cara figures are absolutely just way too expensive, man. Freaking ridiculous. As for episode number 31 of Action Figure Surgery, guys, we did a ton of things, and by ton of things, I mean a ton of things. We took the entire Elite set of Elite Series 70, and we fixed it up. I mean, we had Rollins, we had EC3, we had Gargano, we had Ciampa. We didn't have Ciampa, you jackass. Uh, you just think of Ciampa when you say Gargano, but we had EC3, we had, we had Rollins, we had Gargano, we had Balor, and we had two Ziggler. So, this is actually the biggest episode ever. I think it's like 38 minutes on the channel, and we fixed up all of it, guys. We took the Elite 70 Jack the Ripper Finn Balor, repainted the head sculpt so it looks a lot better, a lot more accurate to, you know, that, that demon paint job that Finn Balor had. We took my two Elite 70 Dolph Zigglers, and we made two different versions. We have this black version here with the smaller arms, because they look much better. Uh, we switched out the boots with black boots, and it's just, it's just so much better. I love that version. Then we have the white boots version, in which we uh, painted the outsoles of the boots, because they forgot to or didn't want to do it for us. And then I switched out the arms with the smaller arms with the white wrist tape. So we had two different versions of Ziggler on that episode. And then we took our Gargano, and not only did we add the logo to the trunks right there that Mattel forgot to give us. You guys can see the bottom of it there. We also switched out the lower legs with some Toys R Us NXT TakeOver Dallas Finn Balor Network Spotlight, whatever the hell I just said. Lower legs and kick pads right here. And then we switched out the feet for the Gargano figure because they gave us those really short kick pads that you will see in the rest of this video. But uh, that's a great fix-up. One of the best fix-ups you can do with your Johnny Gargano, guys. Add the logo, fix up it, and it just, it just makes this figure one of the best figures I think Mattel's ever done, even though though they, they completely botched it, you can make up for it if, you know, you're willing to uh, do some customization with it. And also, on that episode, we did switch out the legs of this EC3 with a Triple H to give him the white tape, and then we switched out the boots with white boots, so now we have a different looking EC3. Instead of the black boots, we have the white tape with white boots that he rocked in NXT. And then, the last figure that we did on episode 31 was this Shield Rollins, and all we did was acetone off the Shield logo, which was never there, and I don't know why they added it themselves. And mercifully, guys, we are coming up on the last episode and like literally the whole backstage area is full of figures and I literally don't have any room uh, to put them all in here so I'll take them one on one or one by one I should say. We took this Fix Up CM Punk. This is the most recent episode of Action Figure Surgery that we did yesterday on episode 32. We took this Fix Up Punk. We switched out the hands with that Punk back there that had the red X hands. We switched it. I think that's it. That's all we did with this figure. That's literally all we did with this figure but on this figure we not only did we switch out those red X hands for the black X hands. We switched out his knee pads, the larger knee pads that he had. We switched them out with the dark gray knee pads that look so much better, and that is all we did with our punks. On our Kevin Owens that we just talked about with the Johnny Gargano kick pads, we added those kick pads to the Kevin Owens to give him a black and red look, and again, I'm not the biggest fan of the way it came out. However, I was thinking maybe if I did, uh, did this design on the KOs, I think that would make it ten times better or something. That's what I'm thinking. I, I don't freaking know, but uh, we did do this yesterday as well. And then finally, the last three figures that we have, guys. We have three different Cena fix-ups, and we'll start off with the Ghostbusters one. We took our Ghostbusters Elite Cena, we switched the arms over to an Elite 40 Cena, and then we switched out the head sculpt as well. We added the Ghostbusters shirt, the Proton Pack, and the hat, and uh, we added some black and lime green shoes as well to this random fix-up that I had, and now we have
we have an all black Ghostbusters look instead of, you know, the uh, the, the gray shorts, which you will see in just a moment. Uh, we also took that figure and we made this beautiful Cena fix up. And this is probably one of my favorite Cenas I've ever had in my collection, guys. I think this is just genuinely so effing beautiful. We took that Ghostbusters Elite, switched out the arms for Elite 40, and then we switched out the shoes for some Enzo Elite 51, I think. Was it Elite 51 Enzo? I can't remember. But we switched out the gray and white shoes, and now you have this beautiful looking clean Cena that uh, nobody else has done before, and I really love it. I love the gray slash light khaki look of the shorts with the blue and the gray and white shoes. Just so beautiful. And mercifully, the final figure, I literally have zero room here. We made this Chain Gang Cena using an Elite 40 Cena. All we did was took the chain gang arms from the first defining moments John Cena and we put it on there my scene has fallen down and then we took the shoes off of the new Ghostbusters Elite which is great black and white shoes and added them to the figure to give him sort of an all black attire slash gray and white as well and uh, that is finally it for every single figure we've ever done slash assembled slash created on WWE action figure surgery 32 episodes in and plenty of more to come maybe we can redo this video in the future when we get down the line, but look at how many effing figures this is. I didn't count them. I, I hope somebody down in the comment section below counted them. I hope that somebody breaks it down by Superstar. Uh, if I had a guess, I would say Rollins is first, maybe Triple H or Finn Balor or Cena is second. Uh, Dolph Ziggler is probably on there, and uh, I think that is it, guys. We literally completed every single figure. Again, uh, some are left out. However, I think I did my best to get every single figure that I could, but that is going to do it for today's video, guys. Really long video. I hope you guys stayed all the way to the end. If you guys stayed all the way to the end of the video, you deserve a super prop. So if you go ahead and comment down below, hashtag my damn surgery or my damn surgery, you will get an automatic heart down in the comment section. Thank you guys so very much for watching the entire thing. If you did look at all these freaking figures, I hope somebody counted it again. I will be going and checking to see if somebody did. But thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy your Sundays. Have a blessed day. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at my damn toys, and I will see you guys in the next video. I need a new tripod.